Hey guys, how you doing? <clears throat> this is Rick again. Um, coming back and uh, doing a little bit of a review on the Sub Tank Mini. Um, got this one from two different places because I fucked up the first one. Uh, got my first one from Cloud Life Vapors, John Lee. I love you guys over there. Um, got my second one. It's probably enough from Juice Vapor, uh, just because I happen to be in the area. Um, not going to do a whole lot of knit and gritty on it. You guys probably know a lot of the stuff that already comes with it. You know, the additional screws and washers and uh, the extra atomizing head. The awesome, you know, here's the thing. This rebuildable deck here, to me, is the best rebuildable deck I've used to date. Let's get a little bit of focus on there. And I'll tell you why I love this thing so much. Um, and just the way that it's designed. It's designed so that instead of having to, you know, like with your Limo or traditional K1 deck or rebuildable deck, um, you either put it, you know, put it in some post holes or you wrap it around the screw. This one, the design on this is really cool as to where instead of doing all that, you just kind of trap the wire underneath the deck. Additionally, um, the air intake is a lot more advanced than I've seen, and I've been using the Limo Drop for months at this point. And, uh, and since I've had my sub tank, my my sub tank mini, excuse me, I haven't, uh, I haven't, I haven't gone back, except for when I broke my first one. I uh, went back to my Limo Drop and. <clears throat> And then went out and got another sub tank mini because I can't keep away from this thing. Um, it's got a lot of different variations for the airflow. Um, ooh, ooh. Pulled a 420. <laughs> uh, ooh. Shit. At least I know where my shit is at. So I may have to go buy another one. <laughs> now, um, ever since I've had this, this is this has been the best vaping experience I've had yet. And I know I said that about a lot of different things, but a lot of new different things keep coming out. This shit is so good. It's like vape that makes you that it's vape that's so good it makes you angry. It's like fuck you. How come you're so fucking good? It does nothing but put out. Um, puts out like a 17-year-old prom date. If, if you're still a teenager, I would, it's not something I do. I'm married. Anyway, um, the air intake portion of these are pretty incredible. Uh, definitely an improvement from the sub-tank original which they are coming out they're coming out with the version 2 on that i haven't looked at the specs on it specifically i got an email from kanger about it um and i hope they use the improvements that they have on the sub tank mini and the regular sub tank for no other reason than i really like the juice capacity of the regular sub tank but man i i like the size of sub tank mini um is with the sub regular sub tank it's it's a pretty good size motherfucker it, it, this thing's pretty good size it's a little oversized for my dna already my uh vapor sharp my vapor shark our dna 40. <clears throat> it's a little oversized for that um because it's you know you guys know the device it's a nitty bitty thing um so you know, would I probably pick that up? No, because I'm digging my my mini here. The air air intake section is pretty much the same at first. You got the little dots. Yeah, I really fucked this thing up. Uh, 
But then when you have it wide open, instead of having those three dots like you do with a regular sub tank, you have this massive slotted air hole and it's just there's no resistance no resistance and it does it's and you don't lose any flavor with it i have uh the juice that i'm using it's my own diy stuff um it's kind of a honey watermelon cantaloupe honey honeydew watermelon cantaloupe bubble gum type deal it's pretty decent i like it And this thing just just kicks ass. Um, using a nickel build because I am using my my temperature sensing portion of my DNA forty. Um, I'm using twenty eight gauge wire. I have eight wraps going on a one eighth drill bit, so I'm oming out to about point one two. And um, it's an, it's a warm, comfortable date, but it's not uh, super hot. Um, I have had no leaking, no leaking issues with uh, this device at all. Um, and that, I remember when I first got my first stuff from Kanker, you know, the Pro Tank 2 and the Pro Tank 3. Anything in the Pro Tank series, um, even when they instituted the airflow base, all of that, um, gurgling, leaking, stuff like that, everybody knows. Everybody had problems with that. There are a lot of people that really hated a lot of the stuff that was coming out from Kanger, and then you know they were still trying to step up the game with the Aero Tanks, the Aero Tank Mega, the Aero Tank Turbo, which you could put two uh, dual coil heads in, which to me was gimmicky as shit. Um, never tried it, had no interest in trying it, because to me it was just really gimmicky. Um, but that that's my opinion of the. Kanger Sub Tank Mini. It's really, really. It's I. I cannot be any happier with the, with this device. Um, also, it does come come with these the two pre made coils, as you can see here. Uh, you get one that is at 0.5, and I think the other one is at point. It's like 1.2. Yeah, 1.2. Um, also comes with a handy dandy glass ah, replacement glass tube right here which you know something I think that is smart for companies to do um, I did actually try to contact Kanger to see if they because any of the guys some of you guys may have seen the post that I put out for uh, seeing if anybody knows if they make replacement just the RDA parts because I didn't want to have to pay for a whole nother uh, our RDA section I ended up doing it anyway but they did say that they don't have it now uh, the US service uh, portion said that they will they don't have it now but they are looking to have those in the near future so if any of you're like me and fuck up your shit you can always contact hangar directly and they will sell you replacement parts um, that having been said yeah um, yeah you, 510 connections nice uh, the only problems that I've had at all is spit back and I've, I'm pretty sure that's just due to my own build my own fault um, I don't think it's anything wrong with the design just my own fuck up on the build um, those come with like I said extra washers an extra coil extra screws for that wonderful trap down system that they have with the uh, RDA section um rba rda you know I, I always mix those two up uh just because the rebuildable animated you know, so it would be rba that's what they have listed on the actual device itself um but no it's it's been a fantastic vape so far i've had it for about a week or so and uh god i could not be any happier with it i really and i have to say one of my personal pet peeves is where you have this really nice bore out drill bit, not drill bit, uh, drip tip, but then it's narrow at the end. You know, if you're going to do this, all right, bore the shit, bore the shit out of the rest of it. 
I, I realize that that won't keep it as a 510 connection, but nine times out of 10, you can throw an adapter on there and you, you know, call it good there. Or it, like with my Lemos and stuff like that, I never really change out the drip tip. Um, just because I'm not that picky. You know, I know a lot of people like the aerated drip tips, and I've been interested in checking those out and trying them out um, just because you know, it seems a little bit different. But uh, I'm happy with what I have with the de uh, devices that they get sent with thus far. Um, definitely they have improved since like you know the drip tips that came with the original like the pro tanks and stuff like that were that they were that hourglass thing and those are kind of uncomfortable to me um these are a little bit more rigid and i don't know why that would seem more comfortable but to me it just does um you know another thing Another thing that I really like, and it's this way with the sub tank as well, or with the regular sub tank, is the ability to, you know, if I want to fuck with this coil, I don't have to wait until the entire tank is vaped out to make any changes that I want to make. So if I, you know, if, if I don't like the way the coil is going, um, as long as my juice is sitting, you know, at least at the same level as, or below the RBA section, as long as my juice is sitting below that, I can pull it out and fuck with the coil or switch the coil out or fuck with the wicking and switch the wicking out. Um, another thing that I've been doing, um, as you can see in the background there, Optimus Prime is sitting on top of a big ass box of sell you cotton, which I've been using for a while, um, almost a year now. And I've been enjoying the shit out of it. You know, the rayon, you get, you go to Sally's Beauty Supply, and you can get them for, you know, 11, 12 bucks. You get 500 feet of them. You'll have enough wicking to last you and your children and your children's children. It's a multi-generational wicking material. <laughs> um, but the one of the other things that uh, the sub-tank comes with is some um, uh, Japanese cotton, cotton pads. Um, can't find that package right now, but I enjoyed that so much that I actually picked up uh, some more of it. Um, some of the the Koga Japanese cotton, and I got that from KBS. Um, it really, I've really been enjoying that. It's it, the um, I notice a lot less dry hits, and I've not been the biggest purveyor of this organic, uh, organic cotton movement, but I think I'm a, I think I'm a believer now. I just kind of did it just to see if I'd like it. And, uh, yeah, I like it. Um, another thing that I've been trying out is, you know, Rip Trippers put out a, um, a new wicking technique that I tried. Really liked it on my Limo drop. Not so much on this device. I don't know if that's, maybe I didn't do it right on this device. I don't know. But uh, I kind of went back to a little bit more cotton on this device. So it was, uh, either way, really, really a good setup. Um, <clears throat> with the Limo drop port uh, version, uh, I don't have hardly any juice left in this one. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty pretty low. It's almost like once the juice got down to a certain level, it wasn't wicking right. And again, that's probably just to my own screw up on the build. You know, I'm not the greatest builder ever. I just like to do, you know, I like to rebuild because for one, I'm, I'm nerdy as dick and... Uh, I, I'm not just not a fan of pre-built coils anymore. Kind of went past that. Um, a couple of other things that I've noticed that has come up. Um, it, it's, or at least a comment that something that I've always kind of struggled with is vaping in public. Uh, the other day, I was picking up my kid from school. 
And when I, I, I don't know about y'all, but when I vape and drive, it's the, my shit never leaves my hand. It's like, I'm like fucking Thomas the train engine puffing down the goddamn road. And um, so, you know, I have a minivan because I have kids. And uh, it was pretty vaped out. And I was, you know, getting looks from the other parents because, you know, you know how that looks. We all know how it looks. It looks like I'm fucking hotboxing that shit um, and picking up my kids. Uh, so, you know, that, you know, not even paying attention to what I'm doing and vaping out the van can look a little weird. And then, you know, the kid <laughs> comes up to open the van and there's fucking clouds of shit, uh, the vape coming out. It looks like, you know, Cheech and Chong is picking up their kids. That's a little bit on the ridiculous side, but you know, somebody said, "Well, I had taken a hit from my from my device while one of the teachers were talking to me, like, hey, you can't do that here.'" And I'm like, "Well, it's just even it, it was me not using common sense, realistically." Um, mm -hmm. But the other day, I went to an establishment that I specifically knew um, I could vape at. Um, it was one that I would uh, go to lunch at when I was working and they specifically had like a sports bar area where they didn't mind anybody vaping uh, mainly because most of the people that worked in the kitchen at the time vaped as well and bought from the shop uh, so I took my wife there which was kind of a big thing because um, the wife and I don't get to go out very much and nobody said anything to me about vaping. Uh, I just kind of did it. But I, and there were a lot of kids around me. So instead of like being, in, you know, doing, you know, boom, clouds, bitch. You know, I wasn't doing that. Um, yeah, I would do it discreetly, blow it under the table, make sure it wasn't going in anybody's specific direction. Um, and I, I don't feel like it was poorly received. Um, but recently there's a post in the Juice Junkies uh, group where Applebee's had said um, that they're not allowing vaping, which is everybody's right. If any store, any business owner's right, if they don't want you vaping in their in their business, you have to respect that. Um, but a lot of people are of the opinion that if you can't smoke there, you shouldn't vape there. I'm not sure if I agree with that. I'm not sure. You know, one of the biggest draws for me to quit smoking, especially with vaping, was that I could do it in my house when I couldn't smoke in my house because I have kids. Um, so, you know... I, my experience thus far is, you know, I go to the Myers, they, they call it the ghetto Myers here, uh, the one at 28th Street in Kalamazoo, and I will vape there all the time. Nobody bats an eye about it. Um, but again, I'm not, you know, I'm not throwing massive clouds. I'll take a hit, hold it in a little bit for it to let it dissipate, and then I'll exhale, there'll be a little bit of vape, and there you go. Um... My my personal opinion about it is, is if the business owner is cool about it, go ahead and do it. But just don't be obnoxious about it. Don't be throwing, you know, 20 foot clouds and blinking out the light from the establishment from the size of your cloud. Don't be that dick. You know, don't be don't be walking up to people, you know, and just clouding them out. That That's not cool. Um, but I'd love to, you know, see opinions about that. Um and uh, I'd, I'd love to hear a discussion about or see a discussion about that because um, it, it's definitely a hot topic in my opinion. Um, and I think it's going to continue to be if we want to be more accepted as people who vape or you know, because there's, there's, there's still that stigma. We're blowing vape, which looks like you're still smoking a cigarette. Um, I was at a restaurant recently um, where it, I typically ask I will ask before I start vaping, just as a matter of common courtesy. And a lot of people are like, well, we don't mind that you do it because we know that it's 
what's coming out of you is safe, but it's still confusing to people. It's still confusing. Like, well, why can they do that and I can't smoke? You know. So that confusion is still there. Of well, it, there's no difference when you know. Those of us who vape, we know that there's a difference. We know that what's coming out of us isn't the same shit that's coming out of the back of a car. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to hear you guys' opinions about uh, vaping in public or even vaping around children. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest things, one of the, the, the cutest things to me was um, as I'm, you know, learn, as I continued to vape, my six year old. And all of my kids were, instead of, oh, God, I can't stand that smell, you know, they were hopping up to me and saying, oh, what are we vaping on today, Dad? And I'd explain to them that they are not vaping. But they really enjoy the smell of it uh, because, you know, you vape the fruity stuff, it tastes, it smells fruity when it comes out. Um, so those are my, my views and opinions on it, and I'd like to see a discussion about it. Um, thanks for watching guys.